My name is Sydney. And my name is Paige. And you're listening to Book Remarks. Welcome to the October Transitioning into November episode of Book Remarks. We're still going to be discussing spooky and Halloween-themed books while also sharing what's in store for the month of November. So we're going to kick this episode off with our personal book recommendations, and I'm going to be starting off by recommending a book. I'm going to butcher the author's last name so badly, as I always do, (laughs) Um, but all the books that we're talking about today will have linked in the description bar of the YouTube kind of thing that you can link things to. I do. Yeah. <laughs> John Green reference for those of you who don't get that. Um, so my recommendation is a book called Shiver by the author Maggie Stephen Vader. I think that would be my, yeah. <laughs> my best guess at how to pronounce her last name. I'm so sorry. Um, but the reason why I am recommending this particular book is that it's not a book that's like super in-your-face Halloween themed. I'm more so recommending it because it's a good transition book in terms of seasons. Mm. That's kind of the main um, kind of theme throughout the book. It's about, it's like a werewolf book and kind of like, not fantasy, but just kind of in that make-belief type world. So it deals a lot with like the transitioning of seasons, if that makes sense. It's a really good book. It's really well written. The only thing I will say about it is that it does that thing that, like, it transitions between characters. So, like, one oh, chapter okay. is one character, one chapter is another character. Mm-hmm. Um, and it goes back and forth between two characters only. But if you're not someone who's into, the, like, that type of reading, it may not be a book for you. But mm-hmm. I really liked it personally, and it was just super well written. So yeah. that is my recommendation. <laughs> nice. Sounds interesting. Well, my recommendation for this month is one of my favorites and a classic. The good old Harry Potter yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, any of the books really in that series, I haven't quite finished them all, but I think they're a really good book to read around this time. You know, yeah. Halloween, Wizards, all the magic. <laughs> it's just a good comfort book, I feel like, that you can read in the fall towards Halloween. It's just a nice, a comfort cozy book, you know? Yeah, I feel like that's a really good, like, family-oriented book, too, because yes. it's not, like, so scary that's going to, like freak out a child exactly yeah (laughs) so it's like good for everyone right and adults still read it exactly so i think it's a good all-around book so a lot has happened in the literary world in the month of october ruby core who is the author of our book club book released her second collection of poetry titled the sun and her flowers on october 3rd And neither of us, you haven't read it yet, have you? I have not. Okay, yeah, I haven't either, so Mm -hmm. neither of us have read it, but I've only heard good things about it. Yeah, me too. I haven't heard, like, someone having a single complaint, Mm -hmm. and I'm so sad. She was in Toronto on October 7th, I believe, and I missed it, and I'm so sad because a lot of my friends have told me that she's a really good speaker and a really good talker, so I want to be able to hear one of her speeches live. Right. I'm so sad I missed this one. Mm. But yeah, that book came out. Um, And then also, young adult author John Green's latest book, Turtles All the Way Down, came out on October 10th. Uh, The book is about a teenager who is living with OCD and also searching for a fugitive billionaire. And Sydney has actually read this book, and I haven't. So what did you think of it? I thought it was really great. I'm a big fan of John Green, so having another book of his come out was like a really big thing and since his last book was the fault in our stars and that was like five Five years ago i think five five, six years so to have another book was like amazing and this one touches on such a like important topic i find like especially now in this age where like mental health is coming out a lot more and people are talking about it more and to have a book that kind of like discusses it but not in a too head-on way Mm -hmm. it kind of shows you the like behind the scenes so to speak where you get to see into her mind and see how she deals with all this stuff and I've never dealt with like mental health myself or like any like anxiety or anything like that Mm -hmm. so I don't know how it feels exactly to have anxiety or to have obsessive compulsive disorder. So reading this book, it kind of gave me insight into someone else's mind that might be dealing with that. So I thought that was really interesting for me personally to see that and to see what could go on in someone else's life that 
I haven't dealt with before. So, and it was beautifully written, yeah. like all of John Green's books. So. Was it kind of like the classic, like, John Green sounding type book, or did it sound a little different? Yeah, it had a little, a little difference in certain aspects of the writing, but I think it kind of, it stuck to his core, yeah. like, typical writing that you, we all know and love. Yep. So, <laughs> honestly, I think it was a really great book, and I would definitely recommend that to anyone who is a fan of John Green, not a fan of John Green. If you hate him, still read it. <laughs> still read it, because it's a great book, and it's very eye-opening. That's that's the word I'm going with, eye-opening. He's also currently on tour with his brother Hank Green, yeah. and no dates in Canada. Uh, so sad. I'm a little bitter about it. Bit. That's okay. We'll get over it. The winners of the 2017 Governor General's Literary Awards came out. Categories that these awards include are nonfiction, poetry, young people's literature text, young people's literature illustrated books, translation, and drama. So if you're interested in seeing the complete list, we'll link the article that CBC published that includes all the authors and their books down in the description bar below. Yeah, and just a little fun fact, as the, um, like as the list came out, I was looking through it, and I saw that Cherie Dimeline, I think is how you pronounce her last name, that might Looks be wrong right. as well. Um, but her book, The Marrow Thieves, is on that list. Mm. And ironically enough, earlier this month, on October 22nd, I was filming a the Hamilton a Celebration of Stories at an old like theater called The Staircase on yeah. Dundurn Street. Mm -hmm. And she was there speaking mm. um, and like reading from this book. So it's kind of cool to oh, nice. be able to have like seen this author in person. Yeah. And then like she's on a uh, winning list. Right. Yeah. It was just kind of so cool, cool, so that was nice. So what's up and coming in the literary world? So kind of continuing with the Governor General Literary Awards, at the end of November, on November 30th to be exact, all the awards, or sorry, all of the winners of the awards will meet in Ottawa to give readings from their books and sign books for the public. So that's kind of cool if you're yeah. in the area. That and, sounds really interesting. And it sounds like a like it's obviously a big thing too, right? right? So Yeah, that's cool. All right, and Doug Gilmore, a Canadian legend and Hockey Hall of Famer, will be at the Chapters in Kitchener on November 13th at 7 p.m. He'll be signing copies of his book, Killer, My Life in Hockey, a memoir about his on and off the ice adventures and antics. Wristbands are required and available with the purchase of the book on the event day. 300 wristbands are available and given on a first-come, first-served basis. So if you want yours, I'd suggest you hurry up on that. And last up on the up and coming event we're going to talk about is author Jody Mittick. Mittick? How would you pronounce his last name? Mittick, I think. I feel Mittick. like you pronounce the C. But Jody Mittick, I'm just going to say that. I know I'm butchering every last name I have ever said on this podcast. But he will be at the chapters in Barrie on November 6th, again at 7 p.m., signing copies of Everyday Heroes inspirational stories from men and women in the Canadian Armed Forces, and he's a best-selling author and a former Canadian sniper. He was one of the panelists representing the book Nostalgia for Canada Reads 2017. If any of you have followed that, you would probably recognize his name, maybe. Through watching Canada Reads, he was so funny and, like, just witty, and I loved all of his responses he had for, like, people that were kind of, like, explaining why his book shouldn't win mm -hmm. and his like him defending his book all of his answers were just so honest and perfect and yeah. I loved it really connected with him <laughs> and with his humor so yeah. I really want to go to his signing I think it'd be really cool to meet him yeah that sounds really interesting now we're on to the segment about our personal lows and highs kind of we're filming this at the end of October, so kind of throughout the month, I guess we would say, would make the most sense. So do you want to start it off? Yeah, sure. While I think of mine. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd say my low for this month was the college going on strike. Yes. Yep, Mohawk College and all colleges across Ontario have mm. been on strike for pushing three weeks now. Yeah. So it kind of sucks not having school, but, you know, we're making the most of it. But I think my high was going to this Sweets and Bakes show. Okay. It was in Mississauga, and it's all about, like, baking, and there were, like, 
displays and samples and live like showings of popular chefs and pastry chefs. Like uh, Anna Olson was there doing live demonstrations, and there was a lot of sales on like bakings and. If you don't uh, know tools. Sydney, she's really into baking. <laughs> I am. <laughs> she so. didn't mention that. I don't think on the first podcast. <laughs> I did not, but um, yeah. So that was exciting for me, you know. Seeing all these things, getting new baking tools and stuff like that. So it might not be interesting for some people, but it was really cool for me. <laughs> yeah, definitely for you. Yeah. How about you, Paige? Um, I would honestly have to say my low is probably the same. The college going on strike. Also, I think we forgot to mention in our first podcast that we're both journalism students at Mohawk College. Might have mentioned it, but yeah, you know, it, just in case, <laughs> just in case it slipped, and that's kind of where we are. That's where we're at. Um, so yeah, my low is definitely the colleges being on strike just because yeah. it's just making it hard to find things to do, I guess. Yeah. But then my high, as I mentioned earlier in this podcast, would probably be me filming the event at the staircase on the mm. 22nd. It was just a whole bunch of authors coming to read from their books, mm. but it was the first time that I had like gone out and filmed something like that by myself, so yeah. it was just a really cool experience to kind of be, I guess, like the main videographer for that event, which was really fun. Yeah. So definitely that was the high of my October. It's really cool. All right, so we're on to the last kind of segment of the book podcast, which is the book club part. Mm. So we read the first section from Milk and Honey, which is called The Hurting. Um, so what do you think of it? You know, this was my first time reading Milk and Honey. Yeah. So... I was not prepared for what she had written about. Mm -hmm. I didn't know too much detail about the whole book itself before going into it. I just heard a lot of good things about it, so I yeah. wanted to read it. So when we when I sat down to start reading the first section, it kind of like threw me for a loop with all that she had written about and mm -hmm. her like I'm assuming it's personal yeah. like struggles and stuff that she went through. So it was hard to read it times yeah with like the details that she would put into the poems that she wrote but I think that it, it was a really good section because like a lot of people go through stuff like that mm -hmm. so to have someone else write about it in such a like articulate way yeah was it was really interesting it hurt my heart a little but it was uh a good read, I think. Mm. How about you? I, this is my second time reading it, mm -hmm. and I, like, my kind of opinions, I guess, like, didn't change on it. Yeah. Almost like yours in a way, where, like, I was really surprised to, like, she, like, writes so honestly and yeah. so raw, and, like, she really doesn't hold anything back in the first section, mm -hmm. so I was really kind of taken back by that as well. But, like, it's almost like she's reading it to you. Like, you can really yeah. hear her words mm -hmm. and, like, understand or try to understand what she's gone through. I also think it's really good that she didn't hold back in this section mm -hmm. only because I'm sure there's, sadly, like, a lot of people that have gone through similar or the same things that she has that yeah. maybe are too scared to speak up or are mm -hmm. embarrassed. And I feel like this is a really good way to kind of show those people that it's okay that, like, this happened. It's nothing to be embarrassed about, but, like, you'll get through it and, yeah, like, yeah. kind of, like, connect with them and, like, help them cope. So I think that's really good. Yeah. Because um, I was on, like, I've done a lot of research, like, on her website and through YouTube videos and just, like, her in general. And okay. I know a lot of people have, like, reached out to her to say, like, this really helped me through this. Okay. This really helped me through this. Yeah. So, I like, overall, I loved this section. Mm -hmm. It does really kind of hit you hard and make yeah. you think and kind of makes you a little bit uncomfortable, but I think that's a really good thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So that was kind of it for our first section mm -hmm. of Milk and Honey. Next, we're going to be reading the entirety of the section, of the sec of the second section called The Loving. It's relatively around the same length as the first section, Yeah. but we're just going to do the same thing as we did this week. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just going to give our thoughts on it, what we liked about it, what we didn't like, what we thought was really good, yep. the writing style of it. So if you want to stay tuned for that, be on the lookout for our next podcast that we'll be recording, maybe sometime in November, I would try yeah. to say. 
what do you think the next section is going to be like? Do you think you're going to like it any any more, any worse, or? You know, I think I think I'm going to like it. I feel like I'm a. I don't know what kind of the loving is. If it's a good kind or yeah. if it's not so good, but you know, I think it'll be interesting to read how she goes from the hurting section to mm-hmm. the loving section, like the, the transition. transition. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Booker Marks. I've been Sydney. And I've been Paige.